Uh, in order to mark the centenary of the birth of uh, Roberts and Davies, which was the 30th of August, uh, uh, 2013, he was born in 1913. I guess it was the 28th of August, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, to mark the centenary of uh, Roberts and Davies' uh, uh, birth, we decided to have a bus tour in Peterborough in which we would go to the various sites that were associated with Roberts and Davies that were still around, that one could have access to, and where we could recreate some of the life of somebody who had been well, when you think about it, a lot of his formative experiences are in Peterborough. He either uh, wrote some of his early books here, his early plays are all done here. He did some work on his first novels here. And we sometimes think that some of his later novels uh, would have been influenced by events as well that occurred in Peterborough. So there was this kind of sense of what would happen uh, on, the, uh, on the streets of Peterborough, if you say. We particularly liked, and we've talked over different times about the fact that Samuel Marchbanks, which is the alter ego of uh, Roberts and Davies, and uh, there's a lot of clever comedy that's created between the two of them, arguing that they shouldn't be confused with each other. But Samuel Marchbanks would uh, always be walking on the streets of Peterborough and always meeting people on the streets of Peterborough. We sometimes wondered if we could wouldn't it be nice if we could really tell the exact spots where these had occurred? But you just have to know that if you're thinking about it, uh, Robertson Davies walked to work, and he walked from his home, which is in the near West End, and he walked to the Peterborough Examiner, which was right in the heart of downtown, then at the corner of Hunter and Water Street. So these were kinds of, of experiences that you have to sort of see that this is a guy in which the place where he was is part of the story of what he, what he wrote. And so it makes it natural to want to go and see where he had been. So we did that. So we picked several places and went. We went to the very first house where he had lived. And of course, what's really nice is that in the correspondence related to Davies, we have the correspondence between him and his wife about going and getting the house and his first reactions about the house, what he liked about it and things like this. So we were very lucky to be able to go to the house and be toured by the current owners who uh, sort of drew some of the uh, features to our attention, and it was a good way to go. His second house, which is called Marchbanks, named, of course, for Samuel Marchbank, by uh, the Simons when they moved in. But at any rate, the second house is also a gorgeous house. It's an 1848 house, one of the oldest brick houses in Peterborough, and it's just a fine gem of, uh, of Georgian architecture coming through here. So that we felt we had to do, uh, do for sure. Then we found, when we went to uh, the library, the uh, Peterborough Library opened in 1980, and the official opening was done with Roberts and Davies, who went and talked uh, about his, his career with books and his career of, of just the life of it. And we were really pleased that when we went to the library, the library actually has the tape recording of the speech that Roberts and Davies made in 1980. And, and, of course, a transcript as well. So this was a real highlight from, from our point of view. Then we went to St. John's Church. Now, part of the reason for going to St. John's Church, and we could have picked it up in different ways, but Robertson and Davies was a sort of the godfather of local theater, the amateur theater in Peterborough. He wrote plays that they could, that they could perform, but he also, and his wife Brenda, were superb uh, because of the experience with the Royal Vic Theatre in uh, England, they, they were very adept at all the kinds of ways to do things in, uh, in theatre and were a great inspiration. The Madrigal Singers were also started by Roberts and Davies and again with his kind of interest in music, he always, always claimed that oh, he's not that good at music. Uh, there was always music in his plays, there was always music in his stories, there was always music is important, you know. So, so that seemed uh, a good thing to pick up there, but I'm particularly uh, fond of the, of the fact that Robert and Davies on the 1st of March, which was St. David's Day, a great day for the Welsh, would have the bells at St. John's Church played Welsh tunes that could be heard in his office across the street uh, in the, uh, on, on Hunter Street. So it was a, it was a great, uh, great thing to do. So we went there. We also went to the courthouse because Robertson Davies, to his credit, we have this one 
reference in the correspondence that says, uh, never did I feel more proud of being a journalist <laughs> than I did today compared with lawyers and, doc and policemen. And it relates to a trial in Peterborough in which uh, the local police board tried to make the examiner say only nice things about the police. So it was a, it was a, 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 a great place to go. Now the other big connection with Robertson Davies is, uh, is with education. We have lots of pictures and stories of him talking to classes in say, Peterborough, uh, PCVS as we call it locally, but the collegiate. Uh, and also uh, Tom Simons, who was the founding president of uh, Trent University, moved into the house that, the, that Robert and Davies had left in order to go to Toronto to be the master of Massey College. So the university connection, especially in that early years and transition, was also an important thing. So you can see how easily it would be uh, to put together a, a tour and the day just went whoosh, whoosh, sort of thing like this. We ended up having lunch at St. John's Church and it was, a, it was a gorgeous lunch too. Food is always important on these kind, uh, kind of events. So that's the, uh, that's the story. Now can I show some of these pictures? This is, this is a picture showing Roberts and Davies in his library. And uh, I love it because of all the books that turn up in the back. This is the first house that they had in Peterborough. It's on Weller Street and uh, not far from, uh, from Queen Mary School, which was also very interesting, another site worth seeing because this is where the summer theater was begun that, uh, that Robert and Davies and, uh, and some of his friends from Stratford and things like this would, uh, would do summer things. This started about 1949, 1950. And the, the dressing room <laughs> was their house. <laughs> right here. The, so you could just imagine that the distance between here and the school, which about half a block, uh, is, uh, would be a place to see on these days for those occasions. The, uh, this is a picture of St. John's Church, and uh, these are the original bells that are brought in in 1911. You can see they haven't been unfreighted in, the, in this picture, but it turned out that all of these bells, there's 17 of them now, all fit in the tower of uh, the church and it's uh, it's incredibly tight fit but apparently because the bells keep getting smaller a whole carillon could fit in this uh, tower so we were quite pleased on that as well and then of course we had to have a picture showing what Peterborough looked like in 1957 sort of at the height of uh, of the uh, the Davies years in uh, in Peterborough. So there's lots of good, uh, good stories that could be told here. One of the ones that uh, quite often uh, gets told is, uh, is Robertson Davies was asked uh, what he thought was the proper word for somebody from Peterborough. And he says Peterboronian is the proper word. And some people say Peterborian uh, in a way that he doesn't say. Uh, but he said that most people prefer a Peterborough man, sort of thing. And he gave us an example of his, uh, his experience. And, and I, I kind of feel close to this because I remember talking to a very old time Peterborough person who when I was raving about Roberts and Davies said, you know, he didn't live here very long. <laughs> I said, why, he was here for 25 years. How can you say he wasn't here very long? Well, it turned out that one of the stories that Roberts and Davies tells is about uh, Mr. McElderry, who was a local lawyer in the uh, firm that later became known around town as Howe Fleming. Uh, it was actually known as the dog firm, uh, really, because it was Howe Bark <laughs> and a few other days like that that were in it. But at any rate, uh, these two ladies were talking. Mr. McElderry, who had come from about 25 miles from Peterborough, uh, they said, was a really very nice man, wasn't he? And they said, oh yes. But the other lady said, uh, but you know, he's not what I would call a Peterborough man. <laughs> and so Robert the Davies sort of took that as a kind of a set that no matter how long he lived in Peterborough, no how much time he spent here, he might not always be a Peterborough man.